Hi, welcome back to Timson S. Yoga. Today's video is brought to you by the Conscious Movement Community. For more one-hour videos, you can sign up at timsonsyoga.com slash conscious movement, or you can just click on the link below. So let's begin today's practice with a uh, seated meditation. Sit with your legs crossed. Sit with your hands, either palms resting down to help to ground you, or palms up to help to cultivate the energy in the body. And just start by emptying. So let go of past, future, any ideas about where else you might be in your head right now. And start to become aware of the sensation in your body as you breathe, hands and your feet. Then open your eyes and come onto your hands and your knees and stretch back into child's pose. So as you stretch back into child's pose, I want you to just practice staying connected to this feeling of feeling the inner body and your breath. And so that is going to be your ultimate teacher as you're practicing. Come up onto your hands and your knees now. And we'll do just a little bit of cat cows. You inhale, start to wheel the chest forward, tip the sit bones up. And as you exhale, start to round through the spine, draw your belly in, look back towards your navel. As you inhale, feel the whole spine, especially the middle and upper spine, start to move in. Nice curve. And as you exhale, round through your back, stretch down through your hands. No rush, just move nice and steady with your breath. One more round. Inhale to arch through. and exhale to round then come into neutral and stretch your left arm forward and reach your right leg back behind you as you do that try not to let your middle drop and try not to let your ribs twist at all then lift your back leg up just an inch but practice staying long lower your hand and your knee and change sides right arm forward and left leg back so try not to just whip your limbs up at the sacrifice of the spine. Keep the spine long as you reach. Inhale, change sides. Try not to lean over to the side or twist. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, change sides. And just notice how slow I'm going to make sure that I keep the length of the spine, thus working the core. Lower back down. Good, then from here we'll stretch back into our first down dog, curl the toes under, lift the knees, lift the hips up, and bend your knees rather. And with the knees bent, just work on stretching up and out of your wrists, like you're being pulled from your hips. And then see if you can start to straighten the legs without losing that. As you stretch down into your hands evenly, rotate your inner arms forward. Then shift into plank pose, bring the shoulders to stack over the heel of the hand, open up across your chest, and lengthen your spine just like the hand and the knee exercise. Then raise your right leg up, left leg up just an inch without the hips twisting. Change legs, right leg up just an inch, keep the chest open, shoulder blades on the back. Set that foot down, set your knees down, and then lower all the way down onto your belly. And on your belly, we'll come into modified Shalabhasana. Press the tops of the feet, lift the inner kneecaps, and roll the shoulder blades onto the back as you reach your heart forward like you're being pulled on a string. Raise your right leg up just an inch, but keep the sides of the tailbone lengthening out of the lower back. Change legs, left leg up an inch, same action. Press the left foot back down, and then draw the sides of the navel in and up, and raise both legs up one inch. Then the hands up but don't let the shoulders turn in at all. Keep all that work in your back muscles. Then place your hands under your elbows, still keeping the work in your back. Roll into low cobra. And then roll up into upward facing dog. Kneecaps lift, stretch back to downward dog and breathe. Reach down into your hands, draw the hips up and back, then look forward and walk your feet forward to the front of your mat. Inhale, elongate your spine. Exhale, fold forward. 
and just let your head drop here. Breathe space into the backs of the legs. Then place your hands on your hips and come all the way up to stand. Good, stand tall, press down through your heels, draw your thighs back. Inhale, raise your arms up. Look up, touch, palms together. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, make a flat back, lengthen out your spine, Ardha Uttanasana. Plant your hands and step back one leg at a time into plank. Chest open, hold here. Bring your right knee up to your chest without your spine rounding at all. Change legs, bring your left knee up. Keep the length so you're working your core. Then lower down onto your belly, knees down first, then lower the chest. And as you inhale, come into Upward Facing Dog, through Cobra first. And exhale, stretch back to Down Dog. So I'm going to keep doing the knees down first for a little bit. If you want to make a, do more of a challenge for your upper body, you can keep your legs straight and lower into low plank with the legs straight. Look forward. Step your right foot up, then your left. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, fold. Let your head drop. Inhale, come all the way up. Raise your arms up. And exhale, arms to your side. Samastiti. Stand tall up over your ankles. Take a moment here to feel the height of your body while I get too hot and take my sweatshirt off. <laughs> All right, so feel your body tall up over your ankles. Raise your arms up again, inhale. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back, draw the navel up as you lengthen your spine. Plant your hands and step back. Bring your left knee up, keeping your length. See the abs turn on, change legs. Bring the right knee up. Stretch that leg back, then set the knees down and lower slowly towards the floor with control. Inhale into Cobra. Work on lengthening as you're feeling your back muscles turn on, shoulder blades draw onto the back, and then roll through into Upward Facing Dog. Keep turning the shoulders. Stretch back, Downward Dog. Then look between your hands, step one foot up, right foot up, and lower your left knee down to the floor. Bring your right hand onto your right knee, lift from your belly and raise your left arm up. So start to open up through the front of your left hip without shrinking in your lower back. Then bring your hands back down to the mat, curl your back toes under, lengthen here, right outer hip draws back and in. Then bring your right hand onto your right knee, lift from your belly and raise your left arm up. So as you hold in this position, feel your right hip hug in and grow long from the front of your left hip up through your chest and from the front of your left hip down through your ankle. Bring your hands back down, step back, downward dog. So that really helped to open you up for up dog and all the back bends that we do. Shift forward, step your left foot up, then lower your right knee down. Put your left hand onto your left knee and slowly start to upright yourself. Lift from the front of the pelvis, up through your chest, up through your pinky finger on your right arm. Then bring your fingertips back down, curl your back toes, lift your back knee. And as you inhale, come up again. Feel your left outer hip turn on to help to keep you tall through the midline so you don't sink over to the side. Then bring your hands back down. Step back, downward facing dog. Look in between your hands. 
Walk your feet all the way up to the front of your mat. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up, raise your arms. Exhale, Samasiddhi, arms to your side. Inhale, chair pose. Suri Namaskar B, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step back. And from plank, lower slow, chaturanga. Inhale, through cobra, feel the blades set onto the back, the front of the shoulders open, and then roll into up dog without closing the front of the shoulders. Spread your collarbones. Exhale, stretch back to down dog. Step your right foot up. Turn your back heel down on the mat, but keep your right hip in. As you come up, raise your arms. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Step your left foot up by your left thumb. Turn your back heel down and hug your left hip in again. Inhale, come up. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. So each time you step your foot for warrior one, it's an opportunity to work on strengthening your outer hips and elongating to your spine. Or if you just let your hips swing out to the side, you'll be turning off the hip, you'll be sinking in your spine. So we can help with the strength of the core by working on that outer hip. Look forward now, step or hop to the top, one foot or the other. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come all the way up, raise your arms up, chair pose, bend your knees, sit back, and then release your arms down at your side. Inhale into chair, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back, Ardha Uttanasana. Step back. And lower slow with control, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Step your right foot up. Warrior one, hug the right hip in and grow long, tall to the midline. Exhale, chaturanga, hands down, step back. Or you can just go right back to down dog instead. Step your left foot, turn your back heel. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, you can take a vinyasa by doing chaturanga, up dog, then down dog. Or you can just stretch right back to down dog. I've chosen to do the vinyasa. So as you start to build upper body strength and health in your spine, you'll be able to do more of these back bends and the lowering slow with control movement. But if you feel that the movement's starting to get sloppy, then you can just stretch right back to down dog until you start to build the strength. Over time, you'll get more control in the movement and that's what you're looking for each time you do it. Holding down dog, then look forward and step or hop up to the top. Inhale, Ardha, flat back. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold forward. Inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana, bend the knees, sit back. 
Let the hips release down as you lift through the sides of the chest and then stand tall up over your ankles, mountain pose. Inhale back into chair. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Plant your hands. Hop or step back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Step your right foot up, warrior one. Hug the right outer hip in. Exhale, chaturanga. Or remember, you can just go right back to down dog. Step your left foot up, warrior one. Inhale, reach up. Exhale. Chaturanga, take the vinyasa or just stretch right back to down dog. Then bend your knees, walk or step up to the front, inhale, flat back, exhale, fold. Inhale, Chair pose. Press up to stand. Samastiti. Good. Then hop your feet hip distance apart. Inhale, roll the shoulders back and open your chest. Exhale, fold forward. Hook your big toes. And as you inhale, find length again through the spine. As you exhale, bend elbows out to the side. And let the head start to drop in. Hold here for five breaths. Each exhalation, exhale right into the place where you're feeling the majority of the stretch. Then inhale, make a flat back and slide your hands under your feet now so that the toes come all the way to the wrist crease. And then start to fold forward again. Inhale, make a flat back. Unhook the hands and come all the way back up. Then bring your right heel up onto your left inner thigh for tree pose. First standing pose that will hold the balancing pose. Bring your palms together. So as you press your heel into your thigh, stretch from your right inner groin towards your knee. As you grow the sides of the spine lumbar tall, raise your arms up. Often what happens is the more that you stretch the leg out to the side, the more the lower back sinks forward. So keep growing your lower back tall as you're stretching your right inner leg and stand as tall as you can up over your left ankle. Bring your arms back down, lower your leg back down, change sides. Bring your left heel up onto the inside of your right thigh, then palms together, heart open, chest broad. Work the left inner leg longer as you raise your arms up. Still keep your hip bones pointing straight ahead. Try not to let the hips twist to accommodate the stretch of the left inner leg. And let your upper traps release away from your neck as you're stretching from your arms. Lengthen from the outer armpits into the pinkies. Bring your hands back down. Lower your leg back down. Then step your right foot back about three and a half feet. And I've set up blocks for my heels for the standing poses. We'll turn for extended side angle, left leg angles in a little, right leg turns all the way out, bend your right knee, then tip from your pelvis out over your thigh, keeping your right side waist long and the spine long. Place your right hand down onto the outside of your heel, fingertips on block or floor, and then reach your left arm all the way over your ear. So if you look, my body is, I'm trying to make a long line from my ankle left ankle to hip to shoulder to wrist. So this is why it's called side angle. Uttita Parsvakanasana, extended side angle. So look for that nice long line of energy in your body and feel how it connects your whole fascial line there. Then as you inhale, come back up, turn your feet to the other side. 
put your hands on your hips. Bend the left knee, keep the knee tracking with the ankle, hip in line with the knee, tip from your pelvis and keep your left side waist long. Don't let the spine round over to put the hand down. Stretch your right arm all the way over your ear. Then look for the line from your back ankle to your hip, to your shoulder, to your wrist. Feel the body lengthen and then see if you could stretch your left inner leg a little bit longer to take you deeper, just like we did in the tree pose. You're looking for that same action of stretch. Keep the back leg long as you do. Don't let the back leg shrink at all. And then feel your breath circulate evenly through your whole body. Come back up. Turn your legs to the right again. And this time with arms up, tip from the pelvis, keep all the length in the spine as you reach out for twist for extended, what's this one called? Triangle pose. <laughs> Trikonasan. Uhida Trikonasan. Then look down, press through your feet and come back up. Turn your legs to the other side. The right leg turns in slightly. The left leg turns out 90 degrees. Feel the pelvis tip you over instead of rounding from somewhere in your back. Once the hand gets down, feel the length in your left side waist again. Open your chest from the collarbones to the shoulders to the fingers and feel the head come all the way back into alignment with the tailbone. Then you can start to turn your gaze up if you like but make sure that you have the length of the spine first. If you're turning your head from a rounded spine, you're just going to start to congest the neck. Inhale, come back up. Then interlock your hands behind your back. Roll your shoulders back, inhale. Exhale, fold forward in between your legs. Prasari to C. So think of your legs like strong, tall pillars. Stretch down evenly through the four corners of your feet. Draw up through the arches, up into the hips. And let the back of your skull start to drop down. And then maybe even start to lift your knuckles up off your butt as long as your blades don't migrate up into your neck. Then Set your hands down onto the floor. Inhale, make a flat back. Lift up onto the fingertips maybe if you need to for more space. And exhale, walk your hands back. Let your head drop down. It's a pretty busy day on the pier today. <laughs> the pier was pumping. Then inhale, come into a flat back. And come all the way up to stand. Good, then step up to the top of your mat. Stand tall in mountain pose. And just feel the effects of the stretch. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back, step back, and hold in plank, then lower slow, chaturanga, chest stays open as you lower, upward facing dog, inhale, roll your chest through, keep turning the front of the shoulder to the back of the shoulder, exhale, downward dog, stretch back. Then step your right foot all the way up by your right thumb. Lower your left knee down. Bring your right hand onto your knee, lift your belly and raise your left arm up, just like we did before the B salutations. Then turn from your left outer rib towards your knee, hook your elbow onto your knee and press your palms together. Then hold here, keeping the right hip in, curl your back toes under and lift your back knee up. 
So in this one, instead of seeing how low you could get, you actually want to lift your back leg until you have a long line from your back ankle out through your head. I can actually lift my back thigh a little bit more. Come on, get that thigh up. Then from here, put your right hand onto your right hip. Place the left hand down, a foot in front of the foot on the inside, and then raise your back leg up. Now same thing, you want to look for that long line from your back ankle out to your spine. So lift the back leg up until you feel that it's in line with the spine, then start to turn your chest and maybe take your arm up if you have the length of the spine. If your body is hunched over, it's better to work with the hand on the hip and just work on lengthening. Breathe yourself long. Then fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back. Plant your hands, step back, downward facing dog. So if you find it challenging, step your left foot up, right knee down. You can always practice the more beginner video, which I'll put a link below. So this is more of an intermediate flow. Inhale, come on up, raise your arm up. As your body opens up better, it'll be able to go into those balancing shapes with more ease. Turn your ribs, hook your elbow to your knee, and join your palms together. Then curl the back toes, lift the back knee up without your left hip swinging out to the left. So perfectly fine to just hold here if the balancing pose is too much. Otherwise, place your hand on your hip, slide your hand a foot in front of your foot on the inside and raise your back leg up from the inner thigh. See how I hold the length of the spine through the transition? That's really important. Find it if you lost it. And then the very last part is to take the top arm up. But don't let the back leg sink. More important to keep the back leg up and find the length of the spine. The twist and the, the arm up come very last. Then fold forward. Whew, feels so good to fold forward after that. Just let your head drop now. All right, now let's come into modified malasa and take your feet outer hips distance apart and keeping the outer heels grounded, start to lower the hips down. So I'll show a cheaty version first where you sit on a block and work on growing the front of the spine tall. So as you work on the health of your knees and your hips, you can just hold that or you can try turning the block down a notch. It's like the limbo. How low can you go on the block? I don't know. Let's see, let's see how low. <laughs> Maybe you can just let your butt drop all the way down without the outer heels lifting. I'm still working on this one, obviously. Okay, then from here, straighten your legs, move the block out of the way. And then bring your feet together. I'm scooting back a little bit so I'll have room for crow pose. Lift your heels up, lower your buttocks onto your heels, and then take your knees wide apart, stretch your arms forward on the insides of your knees. It's like you're trying to um, tuck in on the insides of the legs. And let the whole lower back open, the shoulder blades broaden. Then turn the palms up and hook your triceps back into the top of the shins. Feel your blades release out of your neck and don't let the shoulder blades come onto the neck as you turn the hands down flat Start to lift your hips up over your toes and then lean forward up over your wrist. Don't let the blades come up into your neck at all. Keep the blades strong on the back and then see if you can lift up onto your toe tips and then maybe even lift the feet up to the heels. Don't let the blades come up. Keep the upper chest open. And then set the feet back down. Good, fold forward. <clears throat> so more important to get the strength of the shoulder blades staying on the back, your back muscles, than to hold for more time. If you feel your body losing that, just come out of it and work on lifting up over the toe tips more. That's how you build the strength for it. Now roll yourself up to stand and stand tall. You can check out on Instagram. I posted a little link of how to get into it photo wise, um, Timson SEO at Timson SEO. Okay. Take your left foot back about three and a half feet and fold forward. Put the fingertips down and work on making a long spine here. Ardha <clears throat> Parsvatanasana. And then start to fold forward all the way out over your leg. As 
As you're stretching out over your leg, keep drawing your right outer hip up and back as you let the whole back of the spine open up evenly. Breathe space into the back of the spine. Then inhale, come back up to stand. Raise your left arm up. Exhale, tip from your pelvis, reach, lengthen out past your fingers. Then set your left hand down, block or floor, turn your ribs and chest, and then find the length, just like in the balancing pose. The length is more important. So I'm using a block to help cheat a little bit to find the length, turn the chest, and then take your arm up. If you feel the spine hunching over at all, twist less and work on lengthening. Then bring your hands down and step up for standing splits. Raise your back leg up from the inner thigh and let your head drop towards your right ankle. Then lower your left leg to meet your right. Fold forward. And then slowly roll yourself up to stand. Head and neck, last thing to come up. Stand tall up over the ankles. Step your right foot back about three and a half feet, legs straight. Then tip from your pelvis, keeping the outer left hip back and in. Fold forward out over your left leg. Inhale, come into a flat back position, elongate the spine. And exhale, fold deeply. Let the backs of the legs open. Keep feeling like you're growing the legs longer instead of sinking into your legs. Then inhale, come up, make a flat back. Then come all the way up to stand. Left hand on your hip, raise your right arm. Inhale. Exhale. Tip from your pelvis, lengthen, reach past your fingertips. Then put your hand down, block or floor. Find the turn of your chest, but keep lengthening through your upper spine. Don't let it round over to turn the chest more. Take your arm all the way up. Bring your hand back down and step up, standing split. Step up to balance over that leg. Feel your left thigh bone plug up into the socket and the hip grow tall up over your ankle. Then start to stretch the back inner leg up higher without letting your left hip fall out to the side. Lower your right leg to meet your left. Just let the head drop now. Inhale, roll yourself up to stand. Head and neck, last thing to come up. And then stand tall and mountain. Join your palms together. Samastiti. Reconnect to your breath now. And just take a moment to notice the effects of the standing postures we've done so far. Then cultivating balance, bring your right knee up, reach down on the inside of your right knee and hook your big toe. Stand as tall as you can up over your left ankle as you stretch your right leg out in front of you. Then just notice the tendency of the body to want to shrink down, keep growing as tall as you can. Draw the left thigh bone up and back. Then bend your knee, bring your left hand to the outside of your right knee and twist open to your right. If your balance is good, even turn your gaze out over your right hand. Then look forward, raise your arms up, lift your knee up higher, and stretch your legs straight out in front of you without your butt tucking under.
Then lower your right leg down to meet your left and release your arms down at your side. Other side, bring your left knee up, reach down along the inside of your knee, take your big toe. Then start to stretch your leg out in front of you. But the more the leg goes forward, the more you feel your right thigh wants to come forward too. Draw your right thigh back and don't let yourself tuck under. Stay tall. The reference point is the front of your ankle. Then bend your left knee, bring your right hand to the outside of your knee, and keep twisting upward like a bottle cap, unscrewing. Let the energy travel up the spine as you're twisting, and even look to your left out over your hand if your balance is good. Then look forward and raise your arms up. Then stretch your left leg straight out in front of you without tucking under, strong core, open back body here. Good, lower your left leg to meet your right and release your arms down at your side. Then bring your hands to prayer again. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back, downward facing dog. Then set the knees down onto the floor. With the left knee down, left hand down, open up for side plank. Feel your shoulder balance right over the heel of the hand, then stretch your left leg out behind your right. Stack your right hip right up on top of your left and bring your head back into alignment with your spine. Bring your right hand back down, lower your right knee down and open up to the other side. So you can hold there with the knee down, just working on feeling the stretch for your shoulders. <clears throat> or you can work on strengthening your shoulder by stretching your right leg out behind your left. Then slowly lower yourself back down and stretch back to downward dog. Then shift into plank and set your elbows down onto the floor. Plank on your forearms. Press the forearms down, tuck the low abs in and up, but spread your collarbones so the upper chest is open. Hold here and raise your right leg up just an inch. Keep your low abs tucked up. Change legs. Then come back up onto your hands and stretch back to downward facing dog. Look between your hands and hop to seated. Good, then come into boat pose preparation. Lean in between your sit bones and tailbone, then bring the feet up, stretch your arms forward. Navasana. If possible, if you have the flexibility, straighten your legs, but don't let yourself lean back. Stay tall through your spine. Then bend the knees, set the feet down, round the back down onto the floor. Inhale your arms up. Exhale, crunch up towards your knees. Bring your right leg out at a 45 degree angle. Keep the low abs in. Then bring the left leg out to meet it. See if you can lower the legs to the halfway position, keeping the abs in. Stay crunched up off your shoulders. Then bend your knees, hug your knees into your chest. Roll yourself back up. We'll go back to boat pose. Tailbone, sit bones, bring the knees up. Hold with the knees bent or straighten the legs without sinking back though. 
open up across the toe mounds. Good, then bend the knees, put the feet down, roll down onto your back, inhale your arms back, exhale, crunch up. Take the left leg forward, keep your low abs pulled in as the right leg goes out to meet it. Then see if you can lower the legs to the halfway position, still keeping the abs in. Now take your right leg straight up and bring your hands up and over to the outside of the ankle. Change sides, go up and over to the outside of the left ankle. Change sides. Change sides. And one more round, change, oh, okay, no, that's it. Bring both legs up, lower your head down, take your hands behind your head, elbows wide. Exhale, crunch up and lift your tailbone up. Tuck the pubic bone towards your chest and then lower your tailbone in your head. One more time, keep the legs perpendicular, tuck the tailbone up, then crunch up to your knees and release, lower yourself down. Oh my gosh, thank God that's over. Take your feet the width of your mat and just let your knees spin over to the left. Arms open up to the side like cactus arms. Bring the knees back up and over to the right. Then bring your knees back up, hug your knees in, roll up, and hop or step back to down dog. Then set your knees down <clears throat> and set your elbows down. We'll do the preparation for headstand. So if you have any neck issues, cervical compression, then you need to keep your head up instead of putting your head down on the floor and just work on down dog on your forearms like this, but with the head up. Otherwise, if you develop strength in your spine, you could practice lifting up into a headstand. You can start practicing against the wall. I'm on the crown of my head, the elbows are in. First find the knee bent position, heels to the buttock, and then the legs go all the way up at the end. Reach down through the forearms, move the shoulder blades out of the neck like we practiced in crow, and then look for the Tadasana line. Legs straight up over your head. Now just remember this is only for healthy necks. If you have any history of neck issues, better to just work the down dog on the forearms with the head up position. <clears throat> in either one, you wanna make sure that your elbows stay in, right in line with the center of your shoulders. Lower yourself back down now and take child's pose. Just let the head rest after all that. Then come up onto your hands and your knees. And we're gonna come to Virasana. So take your feet wide enough for your hips to fit in between and slowly start to sit back. Now you can kind of massage with your fingers into the crease behind your knee and then massage the calf muscle down to help so that you can sit back with more ease. If it's too much on one or both of your knees, then prop higher, still too much, just work on leaning back with the hands down. Don't even try to put the buttock all the way down. But otherwise, if you can sit up, the knees are healthy enough, then just practice sitting here in meditation for a moment. Then walk the hands back behind you, foot behind you. Come up onto the knuckles, roll your shoulder heads back, roll the chest open, and then start to lift the hips up. And stretch from the front of the pelvis down into the knees. As you lift up from your belly, up into your chest, roll the chest open. If you can still keep the opening of the chest and go onto flat hands, then do that, but the knuckles just give you a little more lift. Lower your hips back down, and then move the block to the side. And 
We'll come into low lunge now. So step your left foot up in between your hands, the right knee down. Then hold there in that stretch or back out a little, bring your heel towards your butt and see if you can reach back with your left hand for your foot or your ankle. Now, if this is too much stretch on your quad, then just keep your foot down and work on the first variation. In each pose, we want to feel a balance between effort and surrender. So if it feels like you're overdoing, back off a little bit and look for the more surrendered feeling. Then release your foot and come into the half splits. Bring the hips back over top of the knee. Wiggle your front, your left foot forward till the leg is straight with the toes pointing down. Feel the spine get long. I'm using blocks so that I can keep the length. Then dorsiflex the foot, pull the toes back towards you and slide the heel a little more forward so that the leg is as straight as it can go. Good, then bend your knee and release, change sides, right foot up. So hold in that stretch or add on, reach back with your hand for your foot. You can go deeper by putting the left hand a little lower instead of saying high up on the block. But you don't want to sacrifice the opening of the chest. So the chest opening is more important than trying to put your hand deeper because what's happening with your spine will affect the stretch in your hip and in your quad. Release that and start to stretch back into the half splits. So same thing, if you just like let yourself hang over your leg, you're not get getting the full fascial connection of stretch through the body. But if you work on elongating as you're stretching your leg, then you're going to feel a much deeper connected stretch as the whole body stretch. Then slide the foot a little more forward and dorsiflex, pull the toes back towards you. I love this one. This is one of my favorite poses. It feels so good. All right, then bend your knee, release that one. So we're really getting into like the feel good part of the practice. This is, this is probably part of my favorite part. Lower yourself down onto your belly. Then, well, first a little bit more core work. Clasp your hands behind your back, roll the shoulders onto the back, lift the inner kneecaps. So they're lifted up off the floor, then lift the legs up, Shalabhasana. So let's work on strengthening the back body and the core a little bit more. Get as long as you can, chest open, collarbones broad. Good, you can even tap the fingers down to get an extra turn of the shoulders and then lift the hands again. Make sure your shoulder heads aren't sinking on your chest. Then let's do the best up dog of the practice now. So place the hands underneath the elbows and then roll all the way up, but don't let the shoulders turn inward at all. Keep working the blades onto the back, then stretch the legs all the way. Lean the head back more, chest open. Good job. Stretch back, downward facing dog. Just let all those back muscles release now. And then hop to seated. Okay. Then lie down onto your back, bring your heels close to your buttock, feet hip distance apart, then bend the elbows at your side. This is another great way to strengthen your back muscles. Do press the shoulder heads down, lift your hips up. Now press the shoulder heads down, but make sure that your um, bottom ribs don't push up towards the ceiling and then feel the backs of your legs turn on. The inner groins roll down, the knees are pointing straight ahead. Lower yourself back down, take a breath. Again, bridge pose, lift your hips up, point the fingers up, reach the shoulder heads down into the floor, feel the outer hips lift up. Stretch your arms straight now without the shoulders rolling in, 
Grab the sides of your sticky mat and start to turn the inner arms to the outer arms. Keep lifting the tailbone up without the thighs turning out. Keep the knees pointing dead ahead. Then slowly lower your hips back down. Good. One more round. Lift your hips up. Now slide the block underneath and just chill out. Then we'll take the hands, we'll practice the Urdhva Dhanurasana arms. So position your hands like under your shoulders, right by your ears, and then start to turn the elbows in towards each other without your collarbones narrowing. Keep spreading your collarbones and upper traps away from your ears as you turn the elbows in towards each other and let the hands open up even into the floor. If you have that, if the whole hand is flat, the elbows are in and your chest is open and you want to practice lifting up into wheel or Dhanurasana, then go ahead. But if you don't have the hands or the elbows yet, just work on that stretch first. That's going to be primary before you try to lift up. Now move the hand, uh, bring the hands back to your side, move the block and lower your hips down and then real gently hug your knees towards your chest but let the spine lengthen out more than trying to just jam your knees in towards you. Then set your feet down, roll over to your side, press yourself up to seated, and then come into Upavista Kanasan. Sit with your legs wide apart. Okay, now we're to the feel good part. I got a little excited earlier, but this is part of my favorite part of the practice where we let the parasympathetic nervous system be activated, the rest digest. And this is where a lot of the benefits that you hear about yoga start to come in, where it's so good for our mind, so good for the organs. So now take the right inner knee, bring the heel in towards your pubic bone and turn to face your left leg. Sit up tall and then start to fold forward any amount out over your leg. Work on the flat back first, of course, to get the full body stretch. And then if that's coming easily, you can start to go deeper into the pose. So really the whole practice is a moving meditation. But when we spend a little more time in these restorative practice uh, poses, then we can really go deeply inward. Come back up and change sides and having time in the seated poses will also help us to find more ease and stretching ability in our standing poses where we feel like we're might feel rigid then these um, seated poses will help to promote elasticity in the spine these and especially pars with tanasan too working on that pose And by practice, that's how we get better at the poses. So daily practice, ideally one day off a week, and you'll feel that the body starts to open up better. Come back up now and take Baddha soles of the feet together, knees apart, sit up tall. So what I've been sharing with people recently is I had a bad skateboarding injury where I blew my knee, my shoulder, and for a year I couldn't practice. And by practicing the sequence that I linked below, a variation of that, I was able to kind of rehab the body. And this is where I'm finally at after a few months of doing that sequence. I'm able to move with a little bit more ease through the practice like originally was. But really that sequence that I'm posting is very therapeutic. Now let's come into the modified pigeon. So in this position, both legs are at 90 degrees. There's a 90 degree angle in between the legs. And then I'm stretching from the right inner groin to the knee. And then once you find that stretch, you'll work on sitting up as tall as you can. Then change legs. So change sides. And you notice that I lean over to the right. So I try to get myself more upright and I stretch from my left inner groin to my left inner knee.
Good. Then release that one. And come into Ardamati and and Cross your left ankle on the outside of your right knee. Wrap your left elbow around your knee and twist to your right. Just like we practice in that standing twist, grow tall through your spine as you're twisting, like you're being pulled up, twisting upward. Then release, and we'll practice Gomukhasan legs. So cross your right knee right over top of your left knee as best you can, and then start to fold forward out over your legs. Inhale, come back up, and change the cross of your legs. We'll start off with Ardha Mati Andrasana. So across the left, uh, did I say the wrong one on the other side? I'm sorry. Cross your ankle over your knee and twist. Then come back to center and cross knee over knee as best you can and start to fold forward any amount. Might just be working on the flat back like I'm showing there on the fingertips or you might be able to walk the hands further forward. Don't push into it. Where you feel the first barrier, like where you feel your body resisting, just be there with the barrier and breathe. Don't try to jam past it. Let your breath guide you with how deep you should be going into the pose. Then inhale, come back up. And cross your legs in front of you. Start to fold forward. If you don't feel that much stretch, you can work on double pigeon where you cross your ankle onto the outside of your knee and then stack the shins and start to fold forward. But if the other one is enough stretch, you just stay with that one. It's really nice to rest the head on something. So if you have a block that you can rest your forehead on, I prefer that to just letting the head hang. You feel a nice release in the muscles in your back and your neck that way. Then inhale, come back up. Change the cross of your legs. And again, start to fold forward any amount. Breathe into the tension you're feeling in your hips. Allow the breath to help to open up where it feels like there's no space. And inhale, come back up, stretch both legs straight out in front of you, and lie down onto your back. Then cross your right ankle over your left knee, open your right arm out to the side, 
Final spinal twist, let the legs twist over to the left as your right shoulder head releases back down towards the floor. Then bring your legs back up, open your left arm out to the side, change the cross of the legs, and slowly let your legs fall over to the right. Bring your legs back up to center and then adjust your hips, your shorts if you need to, and stretch your legs out for Shavasana, final relaxation. Turn the palms up at your side. Let the shoulders roll open. Let the feet fall open. Feet about hip distance, a little wider than hip distance, hands about a foot away from your body and completely let go now. Just let the body relax. And we'll do just a little bit of breath technique before we let go completely. Take a slow, steady breath in through your nose and fill the lungs up to the top. Then pause at the top and let a third of the air out. Pause and let another third out. Then let the rest of the air out. Let's do that again. Take a slow, steady breath in. Fill the lungs from the bottom all the way up to the top. Pause at the top and let just a third of the air out. Pause. Let another third out. Pause and let the rest of the air out. Then just let go.
take a deeper, fuller breath. Bend your knees and roll over to your side. Press yourself up to seated. Sit up tall and join your palms together. Just take a moment to be grateful for the time to practice and notice the shift in energy in your body at the end of the practice. Thank you. Namaste. So if you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. And if you like more one hour videos, sign up for the conscious movement community. Thank you.